In this video, we'll be talking about images, charts, and graphs. We'll talk about the different file formats and how to import them into your poster. We'll talk about image resolution and how to check to make sure that your images look okay before printing. And we'll give you some general rules that you need to know about images, charts, and graphs in your poster. One of the most important elements of your poster will be its images, charts, and graphs. Not everyone will read the poster, but everyone will look at the pictures, charts, or graphs, so make them count. The worst thing you can do is have blurry images or charts. We see this frequently because people tend to paste in pictures that they find online. Sometimes those images are low-resolution images that don't translate well onto a printed poster. Image resolution is measured in something called dots per inch, or DPI. Many images online are DPI of 72, whereas a good DPI for a poster is closer to 300. Some images might look okay on your screen when you're looking at the entire page, but they might not look good when the poster is printed at its final size. To get an idea of the general quality of an image, you can simply zoom in on an imported photo or graphic until it fills your monitor screen. If the image is too low of a resolution, zooming in will make it look pixelated. If it looks okay when it fills up your screen, it'll probably be fine in your poster. Let's talk about file formats. So what file format should your images be? Vector images are the best, but most people don't have access to those type of files. The next best things are JPEGs or PNG files. As a rule of thumb, use a JPEG or a PNG file for images. For charts and graphs, for example, line art, you should copy and paste special into PowerPoint as an enhanced meta file or an Excel object. We'll talk about those in a minute. This will keep the vector format of your chart or graph. Use the PNG if this doesn't work for whatever reason. To get your images onto your actual poster, there are a couple of options, importing or cutting and pasting. We'll look at importing first. Place the cursor at the position in your document where you want to insert the picture. And on the Insert menu, point to the picture. This will open the Insert Picture dialog box. In the Insert Picture dialog box, you can locate and select the graphics file that you want to import. You can import graphics files in a wide variety of formats. For example, BMP, WMF, GIF, and JPEG. Then click the Insert button. Copying and pasting is even easier. If you have an image on another document that you'd like to use on your PowerPoint poster, you can use Cut or Copy and Paste. To do a basic cut or copy and paste, simply follow these instructions. Select the graphics from the other program, and from that program's Home tab or Edit menu, click Copy or Control-C. Place your cursor at the approximate place on your poster where you want to insert the picture, then on the PowerPoint Home tab, click Paste or type control V. Another way is to use the paste special feature that I mentioned earlier. It gives you more control over how your graphics are imported. Go to the home tab, click the down arrow below paste and select paste special. You can also use control alt V. Once you've done that you'll have several options to use for pasting. Items pasted as a Microsoft Office graphic object will insert as a graphic object that can be edited in PowerPoint. Items pasted as a picture cannot be edited. Depending on the type of object, the result will be the same as a pasted enhanced meta file, or it will turn into a JPEG or a bitmapped picture. Items pasted as an enhanced meta file cannot be edited in their native application. They can only be ungrouped and the ungrouping will cause charts, graphs, or vector objects to split into hundreds of little pieces. So now that you've got your images, charts, and graphs pasted into the PowerPoint file, here are a few tips for using them on your poster. Avoid using pattern fills in charts and graphs. A pattern striped fill may look fine on your screen, but when it's blown up to the full poster size, the pattern may shrink and not be visible. If you absolutely must use a pattern, here's a workaround. Once the chart is placed on your poster in the right position and at the correct size, click the left mouse button on the chart so it's selected. Next, press Ctrl-X to cut or remove the chart. Then press Ctrl-Alt-V for Paste Special. When the dialog box comes up, choose the picture, PNG, and press OK. This will convert your Excel chart into a graphic but here's a warning, you won't be able to edit your chart once you've converted it to a picture. 
Remove gray backgrounds and grid lines from charts. The gray can make things hard to read and grid lines are generally overkill. That's all for this video. Find more at MakeSigns.com.